three hundred mile an hour Pepsi. <laughs> My name is Ben Campbell. This is me, this is my friend crew, and this is the Pepsi Rocket. Now, if you remember around a year or so ago, I did a series of live streams showing how I would build a high power rocket for the very first time. This was part of a program that we have called L1 Month, which is a project within uh, the Space Hardware Club at the University of Alabama in Huntsville, where basically upperclassmen teach underclassmen how to build high power rockets for the very first time. So this year we did the exact same thing. We had a fresh batch of students that came in, taught them how to make some rockets, and Crew just happened to be one of them. And if you don't know anything about Crew, Crew like really, really likes Pepsi. So what he ended up doing was he made a Pepsi themed rocket. And one night while we were working in one of the labs on rockets, the idea came around of what if we decided to put a can of Pepsi in the rocket? So then that's exactly what we did. So basically crew, he built the rocket. He built the launch vehicle. He built um, the big uh, body tube, the nose cone, all that stuff. And then what I worked on, I helped and made some modifications um, with him so that basically I 3D printed a system I'm calling the Bepis Bulkhead. This is the system that actually holds the can of Pepsi inside of the rocket. It's just a few 3D printed parts and um, was designed to hold a single can basically stored up inside the nose cone of the rocket. So the rest of the rocket would operate just as any normal uh, high power rocket with an ejection charge that basically blows the nose cone off, has the parachutes come out and everything. Thing. but the nose cone in this case is just a little heavier on the order of around half a kilogram in mass it's it's a little hefty um, so yeah I'll walk you through the design of that really quick so here is a 3d model of the Bepis bulkhead system so the visibility is turned on so that the nose cone is kind of cut in half a little bit so you can see what the inside of it looks like. This nose cone is originally a three inch diameter nose cone with a distance of around 12 and a half inches from the tip down to the shoulder area. Um, what we did is we cut off the bottom of it so that we could um, access the internal hollow section of the nose cone and actually stick a can of Pepsi in there. Inside you'll see there is this piece right here. This is a 3D printed part. Uh, this is the Bepis bulkhead itself. Uh, this is what the can of Pepsi actually sits on inside the nose cone. And it's got um, a hole in the middle that allows us to put an eye bolt through the middle of it. This eye bolt right here is what allows us to connect the Bepis bulkhead to the shock line, the parachutes, and the rest of the rocket, basically. Around the perimeter of this, there is also a series of holes that go through that allow us to use this outer ring and the nose cone itself to put some holes through for mounting the Bepis bulkhead inside so that it doesn't uh, shift around and gives us a solid connection um, that doesn't allow any of these parts to move um, when it's all dangling and tumbling around hanging from the end of the eye bolt on the shock line during descent. Um, it's a pretty simple system, it's just two 3D printed parts and some screws and uh, yeah, pretty simple. So when launch day finally came, we flew out of a site around a half hour east of the Huntsville area. It was operated by Huntsville Area Rocketry Association, or HARA, and uh, they were very helpful in kind of helping moderate everything and get everybody certified while we were there. Um, so we drove out from um, Huntsville and the UAH campus. We had everybody intervene, um, meet up first, um, make sure we have all of the tools, all of the materials, all of the everything we needed before heading out. And then we had basically a big caravan of cars um, head out east to the launch site. Once we got to the launch site, everybody started setting up their tents and everything, setting up all their equipment, getting their tools, doing um, all their final prep work on their rocket. Um, so we did um, some final inspections, final um, everything on the rocket. And then one thing that we realized we forgot was two screws to help hold the Bepis bulkhead inside the nose cone. Um, so um, in classic engineer fashion, uh, duct tape came to the rescue. We're doing live rocket surgery here. Just adding a little tape in here just to help secure the, the Bepis bulkhead on the inside there. 
So we had two screws still inside that we could use, but we needed four in order to fly safely. Uh, so what we ended up doing is that we just kind of loaded some duct tape um, onto the inside of the nose cone where the bulkhead is, just kind of throwing, throwing it in there as best as we could to try to make it good. Um, so yeah, we, we did that. So once everything was pretty much finally integrated, what we did is we brought the rocket over to the table where crew could then um, get um, the initial paperwork done for getting his certification and the initial inspection of the rocket and everything. And basically we told the officials there, um, so yeah, we have a lot of ballast in the front of the rocket just to help with stability and everything, nothing, nothing too crazy. And um, everything moved forward with that. Um, <laughs> and then, we um, took it and then did some just final last minute checks. We uh, double checked the parachute, double checked the lines, made sure everything was all good, integrated, and then headed out to the launch rail. There's that little... Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> then we, uh, so we got the rocket, we slid it onto the launch rail, helped them hook up um, the, um, the igniter and got some final pictures before sending it off on its maiden voyage. We headed back to the viewing area, and while we were sitting there uh, getting our cameras ready and uh, looking everything over, we were starting to get a little, a little nervous. Um, everybody had been doing fine so far, but we were a little nervous with uh, that high amount of mass sitting at the top of a bulkhead that's secured very, very questionably. So, uh, we were kind of nervous and then eventually decided to fly, um, hit the ignition and flew. And here are a few shots from that. Here we go, Tennessee rocket, level one, Aero 6 100 Arm. Here we go, five, four, three, two, one. Hey! All right, man, that looks great. Nice flight. That went yeah. really well. So right after ignition, the rocket went straight up, everything was looking good, and then it kind of kept going straight for a little bit and we got just for a split second kind of nervous that um, it would just kind of keep going. And uh, we were a little bit worried that the ejection charge that we had loaded in might not have enough juice. Uh, we had done some black powder tests beforehand, but they weren't looking the greatest. So with the last bit of black powder we had, we just kind of loaded everything that we could and got it in. But luckily it was enough. It was able to get the nose cone out uh, a little later, but still went out just fine. Parachute came out and caught and everything. Everything was great. And then it kind of just gracefully descended out into a field full of yellow flowers. And then we headed out to go and try and recover it. We are here recovering the Pepsi rocket. There is a flown can of Pepsi in that direction. So during recovery, everybody was kind of nervous of like, did it work? Is everything fine? Was there any leaks? <laughs> and so when we got there, we found that everything looked intact. Um, we checked everything over, no damage, everything looked great. It's, it's, yeah, we're good. It's in there. But then one thing we noticed was when we picked up the nose cone that had the can in it, it felt significantly lighter, but there were no leaks that we could find. Nothing, nothing was like sticky, nothing was weird. Um, the only thing that there really was was that the nose cone was kind of hot a little bit. It was kind of warm, which was kind of weird. <laughs> that feels like it could have a can in there. Doesn't it feel lighter? It I does. never felt it before though. It then. does. But there's no leaks. Yeah. And it's not like no sticky, leaks, but it feels mm -hmm. lighter. True. True. Okay. It feels lighter, but there's no leaks. Uh, yeah. Doesn't it? It's kind of warm, actually. Yeah. You think it, you think it aero, aero heating. Oh. Think it you gonna, you gonna open it? Not the when we get back, but it feels we'll Do it at the table. You sure? Yeah. It'll, it'll boil off. Let's go. It'll boil off. Back to the tents. 
So we got that and everything was fine, but everybody had a screwdriver on them to start taking screws out to get the, the can out. And everybody was like, we gotta do it, we gotta do it. And it was like, wait just a minute, let's bring everything back to the table, get the cert, and then crack it open. So uh, we did that and then we got to the table, we uh, told the certifier that, um, you know, here's, here's how we found it, here's everything all good, and then did final check marks on the form, signatures and everything, and then as soon as we had the form, that's when we told him what was actually inside the rocket. That's why it's so heavy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so, so uh, uh, open it in so many things. It's it's as good as a Tesla, but that'll work. It's, it's, it's our first <laughs> liquid rocket. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, so then basically as soon as we had the paperwork for crew certification, then we then we cracked it open, of course. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Oh, it is. Hold on. The ring. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Ready? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There it is. Alright, crack it open. Crack it open, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, we, we had a great time and uh, had some 300 mile an hour Pepsi and everybody that came out with our group, we had around 15 people come out to fly and get certified and had 100% success rate, everybody flew. Um, there was even one guy, Jackson, he actually inadvertently had a SpaceX landing where um, during his flight, it actually went up and then when the parachute was coming down, it was like the mud was just tacky enough to where it gripped onto the rocket and then just boop, had it stick straight, perfectly vertical. My rocket landed on its tail. What the heck? Just a perfect, perfect landing. Just, it's just standing there. I ain't touched it. She's just standing there. Yeah, that was really cool to see. So we had we had some fun launches. We had Pepsi. We had a accidental SpaceX landing. Um, everybody had certifications done, and yeah, everybody had a great time. It was, it was a lot of fun. So one last thing at the end of the video is so I'm actually working on a new website right now. And it's got a handful of projects that I'm in the middle of transferring over right now. But one thing I've got on there is a small store. So if you ever wanted something like a shirt or maybe a custom move before launch tag or a sweatshirt or anything like that, um, if you are interested, feel free to check it out. Um, I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys later. Thanks.